halfway through the week and I've finished some books already so let's talk about those first. We have Player of Games by Ian M. Banks. This follows a character named Gerge who is very very good at playing games and he lives in a society where nobody wants for anything, nobody needs a job, money isn't really a thing, you don't need to buy anything, you can do whatever you want, say whatever you want, spend your time doing anything that pleases you and Gerge likes to play games and he's offered an opportunity to travel across the galaxy to play a game that no culture resident has ever played before and it's classic sci-fi so I already had a feeling going into it that I would struggle with it and unfortunately I did. I wasn't a huge fan. There was a really interesting setup in the world that Gerge travelled to in that the people there had three genders. So there were males and females and apices, which were sort of non-male, non-female. So you would take from that that they were sort of the non-binary gender within this particular race, which was a really interesting concept to me, especially for a book written in the 80s, but unfortunately the author ruined it by saying that in order to refer to these apex individuals, rather than a non-gender specific pronoun, the author decided to use the pronoun of the more dominant gender in the, the reader's language. So therefore all the apexes or apices were referred to as he, which really irritated me because the author had a really good opportunity to be very progressive, especially for the time that this was written, but no, that was spoiled and that really coloured a lot of the book, that kind of mindset really coloured a lot of the book in my opinion. Also there's virtually no time spent on what the game Gerge is playing is actually about and how the game actually works. It just follows what he is thinking about the people around him and the situations that he finds himself in, but we don't actually get any exploration of the game itself. And Gerge isn't a particularly likeable character. I don't think he's supposed to be. He is just a bit of a shit basically but that just means that the whole narrative is focused on a very self-centered person thinking very self-centered thoughts so I wasn't a fan of that one unfortunately. However I did also finish Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman which I enjoyed a lot more. This is an apocalyptic book about Southern California when the taps run dry and there's no longer any water and it follows fairly typical apocalyptic type story path. There are some shocking moments in it and it's a very high tension situation that the characters are in and we feel that as we're traveling along with them. It is multiple perspective so we have a few different characters that we are following. In this one they're mostly all together in the same place but not necessarily all of them are and that type of narrative really adds to the tension because we only know what our characters know, we don't know what else is going on in Southern California, we don't know if steps are being taken to resolve the problem. All we know is what our characters know and what our characters are going through and our characters are all young adults so we feel the stress from them of the situation and I really enjoyed it but a word of warning if you're going to read it make sure you have a drink nearby because you really feel thirsty. Then I picked up Solitaire by Alice Oseman which I kind of needed after this one. It is a contemporary young adult book about a girl named Tori who suffers with depression, quite significant depression, and she is struggling with having motivation 
for anything really and for caring about anything really which is really relatable to me because I've had struggles with depression and have felt very much like that when I've been struggling in that way and so it was really interesting for me to read. It also follows her relationships with her friends at school. She's in sixth form so she's like probably about 17, 17, 16, 17 in this and so she's struggling with all of those kinds of things and then at the same time there's this blog called Solitaire that is pulling pranks at her school and she's trying to figure out what's going on. Really enjoyed it. I really recommend it. It, much like the other Alice Oseman books I've read, it's a nice easy read but deals with topics that are a little bit more on the difficult side and I quite enjoy that. Okay, my camera battery dies what a shock and I'm going to lose the light while I'm waiting for the batteries to charge so I'm just going to film this section on my phone so if the quality is a little bit different then that's why but it shouldn't be too bad because this is a new phone with a pretty decent camera so hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, as for current reads I'm carrying on with my reread of Oathbringer. So I started off the week on page 831 and so far I'm on page 928. So nearly 100 pages read for the first half of the week, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And then my other read is on the floor. And then my other read is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which is a horror book which is very different for me and I'm only 33 pages in and I'm already quite stressed out because it's quite a scary book so far. Um, it is about mermaids or sirens, same thing really, but the original myth where mermaids and sirens are brutal people eating monsters and a ship that has gone out to make a mockumentary about these mermaids or sirens has dis well the crew has disappeared and the boat was found with no bodies everybody gone and then we are in the future following the sister of one of the people who was on the crew of that ship and I'm guessing she's going to go out to Mariana's Trench too and there's going to be some death by mermaid I suppose that is what I understand so far and it if you've ever seen the film Jaws it has that kind of feel to it so far which is a little scary and not my usual thing. So I have a couple of books that I'm going to lean on if I need some light in between that somewhat scary book because I am a wimp and I don't want to have nightmares for the whole week while I'm reading that. So I've still got my reread of the Mediator Grave Doubts book five on the go so I haven't really been focusing on reading this because of newts last month so I'm only on page 36 of this one but it's a very familiar and light and fluffy middle grade book so I can reach for this if I start to feel a little bit too stressed out by <laughs> Into the Drowning Deep and if I need something even lighter and fluffier I've also got Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston which is an adult romance I think. I think it's adult romance I'm not sure but it follows a love story between the Prince of England and the first son of the US so and it's supposed to be kind of cute and light and fluffy which as we've gathered is potentially what I need to break up the terror that this is going to put in me but that's where I'm at right now and I will update you again at the end of the week. 
end of week check-in and I've had quite a lot of headaches and things this week so I actually haven't read as much as I would have liked but I did make some pretty good progress with Oathbringer. So I started off the week on page 831 and I'm rounding out the week at the end of part four which is page 1054. So just over 200 pages read in this this week which is pretty good considering it's not my main read and I'm still enjoying the audiobook experience, still enjoying the reread. Not a whole lot to say about this one. And then my other main read is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant which is a horror about sirens but so far it's mostly suspense and I think from what I've heard from other people that that's pretty much what it is all the way through. So it's sort of less horror, more thriller, I suppose. And I'm on page 164. So not, not especially far in. I think it's about 460 pages. So I've still got 300 pages left, which is the majority of the book. Like I said, I haven't read as much this week as I would have liked. Possibly a little bit because I'm scared of getting to the scary bits of this book but I'm hoping that I will finish it soonish, certainly in the next reading vlog and hopefully I'll read some other stuff then as well. So I don't really have too many thoughts so far so because this vlog will therefore be pretty nothingy I thought that I would give you a quick tour of my reading room as a little addition to this reading vlog. So let's have a look. Okay so this is what it looks like from outside of the room. This first section of the room is not going to be particularly great lighting wise. There's just no way for me to light it. But you come in and then I've just got a poster there and my mirror with a couple of art prints on the side of my bookcase which you've seen in my recent bookshelf reorganisation video which I will link for you don't mind all the litter on the floor because the boys, one of the boys litter trays is in here and they love to play with it over in this corner, nothing fancy, I just keep my lights just there. This is the spare bed. Then we have a bookish tapestry just here. And in the corner is where I do my editing. My partner set up two screens for me because he's really cool. And then I have my little reading corner with all my art prints on the walls and my bookcase and my chair which is a blue velvet reading chair but I have that yellow blanket over it because Haruki really likes to sleep there and he sheds a lot so <laughs> I've put that there just so the blue velvet doesn't get covered in ginger cat fur and that's it so as always let me know what you've been reading this week i hope you've been reading stuff that you're enjoying but that's it for this one thank you so so much for watching if you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and i hope to see you here again soon thanks